This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Score Energy Drinks, MKM 24 Hour Pharmacy, and the New Lux Maitland. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, it's Wednesday night. We're talking about uh, club rugby in Western Province. Fantastic to have you along. It's certainly ticking along. In fact, tonight you'll see on the screen at the bottom, you'll see some of the friendly fixtures and results a little bit later during the course of the show. Lots of competitions coming up, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Uh, let me introduce you to my panel. But before you, I introduce you to the panel, a uh, big thanks to Score Energy Drinks on board with Cape Rugby TV. As you know, they are the sponsors to the West Province Club Rugby 7s. Dulux Maitland at number 30 Kuburg Road, just over Foot Trekker Road. All your paint supplies and, of course, MKM 24 Hours Pharmacy on the corner of N1 and Durban Road. Uh, free parking. They've got everything that you need pharmaceutical-wise. Right. Panel is back as usual. Jerome Parvater. Jerome, nice to have you back. Yeah, good to be back again, JP. Lekker, man. Ishmael Dolly. Haven't seen you for a while, man. Yeah, good to be back uh, amongst these esteemed gentlemen. Um, I mean, great company here tonight. So, uh, feels like the good old days again. Oh, I'm glad you're happy that... Uh, glad you approve. <laughs> And then bring you to my next guest that you've just um, put the tick mark next to, Mr. Danny Jones, head of amateur rugby. Evening, JP. Good evening, listeners and viewers. Great. It's nice seeing Ishmael here for the first. I must say, I saw him as a 14 year old boy, but I must say, he has less skin folds now than he had then. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening in his life? You see, uh, that's what happens when you come up with Mr. Jones as your manager with all the provincial teams in your youth day. So you can see uh, it's reciprocal. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it moves between the two of you? Yeah, but yeah, at one stage yeah. you try to look like Mr. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> so Ish, but I mean now that we're on yeah. this on the on the on this on the topic, so to speak, where where have you been and what are you up to? Um sure, a lot a lot, a lot has happened. Um I'm currently uh, working for the professional rugby players organizations, uh, my players. We look after all the professional rugby players in South Africa. So um, still the same job. You haven't moved on yet. It's basically rugby off the field, okay. uh, but still at, at Unimol, still head coaching me, and um, yeah, loving it. Unimol. And you guys have been uh, way, in fact, we're going to look at uh, some of your CrossFit stuff. We know that you guys have been doing this annual thing now, the social rugby. Uh, you and False Bay are quite close now. Yeah, we have a good relationship. I mean, last year with the drought, we had to think out outside the box, you know, mm. in terms of keeping guys uh, entertained and, and sort of engaged. And yeah. uh, it went well. We had a, a John who came up with the idea that we, we do a CrossFit event amongst the two clubs. Of course, you're talking about John van der Valt, um, head coach at uh, False Bay, where we we're hoping to have him on today, but uh, occupied, so... Yeah, no, so, um, he's, uh, I mean, we've got a great relationship, and uh, yeah. it just carried on until this year, so, yeah. So, this weekend was a CrossFit challenge? CrossFit challenge yeah. again, um, False Bay coming out winners, yeah. uh, but uh, it was nice to see that guys off the field uh, in, a, in a different environment and space. You know, yeah. usually we, we're knocking each other out on a rugby field, and now we're having some fun uh, in a bit of CrossFit. And you've been doing some traveling of late as well. Yeah. Um, we, I'm we not talking about your traveling now. I'm talking about Milnerton. Correct. Yeah. We were up in Durban uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we yeah. played against College Rovers. Got taught a, a very good rugby lesson. Uh, but uh, it was a great experience for the guys playing at Kings Park yeah. um, and playing the curtain raiser to the Sharks Blues match, uh, which was uh, quite cool. That must have been fantastic. Yeah. Amazing experience. Unfortunately, not a lot of people in the stands, but um, still great fun. Absolutely, but um, not, not many can say that they've played at Kings Park, and um, not many can also say that they've travelled up to Durban. So. But you can say you've played at Kings Park because you actually have. We well, can ask Mr. Jones. So. Mr. Jones, has he played at Kings Park? He's played at Kings Park a number of times, JP, no doubt about yeah. it. He's, you know, he's always uh, undercover in that, but he was, he, he was a good rugby player. Yeah. Uh, so pretty he left schools for my players because... Um, there was a career path for him in school rugby, you know, going forward. And in, most importantly, he's still with Cape Rugby TV. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, we, <laughs> I'm, we beginning to, to, I'm beginning to wonder my, myself. <laughs> 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 Folks, we've got a, a packed show this evening. Um, uh, we, got, uh, we went out to um, we'll take a look at uh, Brackenfell. They played against Busy Bees. Um, a lot of friendlies going on at the moment. A lot of friendlies. We're going to take a look at that. We'll also be catching up with the um, coaches and captains um, as we talk through some of the season and some of the friendlies line up. We'll be speaking to Hilton Pettinger, is the coach at Busy Bees. Of course, Luvo Ntiapi is the captain at Busy Bees. Tinas van Rensburg and Llewellyn from Blurk are from uh, Brackenfell, their coaches and captains. And we also go, went down to Langa to um, uh, catch up with their uh, pre season uh, training. And of course, our DHL Stormers pre season training feature, as always. Uh, when this week we'll speak to uh, Flyhoff, Jean-Luc Duplessis. But uh, let's get the ball rolling now, so to speak, and uh, take a look at the friendly between Brackenfell and Busy Bees.
Oh, welcome back, folks. All right, Bracken Farm, Busy Bees testing the water there. Jerome, let's go straight to you. Um, of course, we're talking about two different leagues here. Bracken Farm is playing in Super League A. Busy Bees is playing in Super League B. Uh, not a fair matchup, but a great, a great way to test the waters. Yeah, it's a good exercise for, for Busy Bees. I mean, it's the first time that they're in um, Super, Super B. Um, they've done well, work hard to get there, mm. but uh, uh, it's always good to play against a higher, higher opposition uh, because um, they can test themselves and, and see where they're at and um, look, uh, the score uh, is, um, is not so good like the first half was, was, was a huge score, but they, they didn't, you could see how the game was going, it wasn't embarrassing. So there's a few uh, a few aspect, aspects of the game that they have to work on, especially in the tight phases, but but they will get there. Yeah, if we, I mean, if we look at that score and we're talking about a, essentially a Super League C side playing against a Super League A side, 36-0 at half time. We've seen much worse in Super League A itself um, mm. between a... Uh, Ish, I don't know, you'd agree with me? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the score is, is a bit irrelevant, especially mm. at this time of the season. Uh, teams are, and coaches are trying out different combinations and... Uh, maybe just seeing, listen here, uh, what can work, what cannot work. Um, and I think we're still five weeks, four weeks away from the league. So uh, it's a great outing, I think, for Busy Bees. They can now test themselves and say, okay, this is what it takes to play Super A. Um, yeah. Maybe these are the things we need to work on. I think most important, I think conditioning plays a massive role. Uh, and then the others will fall into place. But um, well done. Um, well, we'll still take a look at the second half and we'll get a better, a better feel for it and we'll go. But let's uh, catch up first. Before we take a look at the second half, let's speak to uh, Busy Bees um, uh, captains and uh, coaches. Of course, that's Hilton Pettinger and Luvo Mtiapi. I am actually ha um, happy at what happened today because, why, as you said, Rakavel is a first team outfit, uh, Super League A outfit. And they actually showed me today what I wanted to see. You know, they came with pace, they came with power, they came with aggression. And I actually loved it that they put our guys, the Busy Bee guys, under pressure. And that's a game that we needed. It makes a huge difference if you have players on the field that you can practice with. But um, sometimes you get um, the lazy players, they don't want to do fitness. And today we were exposed when it came to the fitness side. But we spoke about it now in the, in the huddle afterwards and we're going to work on that. But I'm just happy at what happened in the second half. In the second half they took 20 minutes score the first try in the second half and it just showed that our players started to play rugby we started to put them under pressure and we started to really defend against them so Brackenfell had a bit of a tough time in the second half but I'm proud of my guys the way we stepped up and the way we adapted to their fast paced kind of rugby I don't want to play against teams that you can overpower easily and then you can learn nothing from them today we learned a lot from Brackenfell and um, we're going to take that back to the training field and be an even better team next week. So we are going to be ready and I am glad that the honeymoon is over today. You know, what we've experienced today is what we can get in the Super League B. So we are looking forward to it. The match was good, man, but uh, those guys, they showed us that they play on a better league with us. But um, on the second half, we, we showed them that we, we can play rugby and uh, we were also dominating on the scrums. Uh, even though we didn't, we, like, we didn't score, but uh, it was a good game. I think he, uh, the coach made the, the best decision to let us play, like the guys that played uh, the Super the super A, because we wanted to see if like we are capable of playing on Super League B. So as you, you saw, like my guys, like the second half, like we, we dominated. So I think like we were ready for Super League B. Uh, the, first, uh, the first half was a bit scratchy, but uh, we, we managed to pull through on the second half. I think uh, the first half, we, my, my guys had butterflies, man, because like, they thought maybe we, we're going to lose. Uh, we lose, but uh, those guys, like, I mean, like we, we, the second half, we also dominated. So I think, yeah, we, we can do it, man. We're looking forward to play on Super League B. I think we we much uh, ready to to play on Super League B. But uh, I think my my guys, we, we need to go back to the practice and like fix uh, like where we, we lack on. But I think we capable of like playing on Super League B. So uh, we're much ready. 
Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV every Wednesday night from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock here on Cape Town TV, DSTV channel 263. Remember, you'll find all our clips on YouTube. Go and subscribe to our Cape Rugby TV channel on YouTube. And, of course, we release the clips on Facebook as well, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Danny, let's just bring you into the picture before we take a look at the second half. Um, I'm liking the fact that you've got Super League A teams playing against Super League C teams. We a lot of friendlies going on at the moment. The guys are not just playing head-to-head, -head, sort of uh, the false Bays and the Milnertons or the Hamiltons and the Martys. The guys are crossing. I mean, this weekend we see false Bay playing against Collegians. No, no, that's uh, very good, uh, JP. It's good for rugby. It gives the, the second team or the lower team an opportunity to at least uh, understand what they need to do. They need to improve the game, but it gives them an opportunity at least to see to, to match them where where they now and what do they need to do to get to the yeah. aspiring Super League A. So we're happy that those that, that interaction is taking place. It's also good because normally the competition teams only they stay within the competition. Mm -hmm. Now they're visiting other communities. They're spreading their own brand. It's good for social cohesion. Well, I was going to say great. from a social cohesion point mm -hmm. of view as well. I mean, it's, it's a, um, one doesn't want to categorize things, but. The reality is uh, that they're a little bit like the sevens from last year. Everybody's getting to meet each other pre-season. No, that's right. And, I, and in, in this in this respect, Collegians and and uh, um, False Bay, there's a link. There's a number of Collegians plays mm, at False yeah, Bay. Yeah. So maybe this is False Bay's uh, social responsibility in, in giving Collegians. Not sure how many busy bees players are playing at Bracken Fall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there might be a few. There might be a weekend. few after this weekend. Yes, yes. You think the guys are going to be. Um, um, well, I think once you play that first uh, preseason game, I think you are set. Uh, what I really want to know is if you're a Busy Bees player and you want to go to Brackenfell, right, do you have to phone my players first to check? <laughs> <laughs> you, Mr. Jones, you, you, that's his player. That's yes. your department. <laughs> uh, you, at this stage of the season, that's a good question, I suppose. At this stage of the season, are you allowed to move? There's not it's, you, uh, enough time? It's freedom of choice yep. and association. So, yes, you'll but find there's a cut that off coming? there is a cutoff. 21 days before the season starts. Mm. So I think that cutoff is around yeah. about the 12th of March or so. Yeah. Yeah. After that, you, you're locked in for the year, which is good because the club has invested mm. in you and, and all those things. And you don't want, oh, day before the competition yeah. starts, your first team is sitting exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. in another team. You know, that, yeah. that's, un that's not mm. good. Well, let's take a look now at the second half between uh, Brackenfell and Busy Bees.
Welcome back, folks. All right, um, Ish, let's bring you straight into the picture here. Brackenfell is going to be up against Moulton in the Super League game. Is there anything that you can read from this game here? Because final score there, 55-5 to Busy Bees. But like you said in the first half, uh, that there, Mr. Jones, are you opening a can of score under the... Under the you can show please, us. Please, you know please, please, please. Have a break, have a, have a have, score. Have a that score. is one cool drink that it's you amazing. don't... You don't have to hide that. You can absolutely... <laughs> I try to hide the sound. I love... Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I love the okay. fact that you... Uh, here we go, folks. Score Energy Drinks, of course, the official partner to the Western Romans Club Rugby Sevens and partner to Cape Rugby TV. Ishmael, let's get back to you here. Um, can you read much into that game in terms of Super League A structures? I don't think so. I think it's very early days. Uh, Brackenfell is looking very good. Um, we will be playing them in a couple of weeks' time, but just, uh, they're really, really going to be a, 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 a team to look forward to. Uh, but Busy Bees uh, salvaged a, lo a late try there at the end, yeah. uh, and I think they can take a bit of confidence uh, yeah. that they've scored against a Super League A side, um, a try at least. And, and I mean, I'm sure the coaching staff and the players will, will, will regather. Yeah. And, are you, is your, your match against Brackenfell, is that, are you talking about your league fixture league or, picture, or your league friendly? Picture. No, league fixture. Right. Mr. Jones, are the league fixtures now final? Yeah. Is it finished? It's final, it's finished. You're just waiting for Paul? It's just waiting for, we just, yeah, but the, the bulk is done. Yeah. With regard to Busy Bees, I think this year is a year of consolidation. So I'm glad they're taking the top, the, the big guns on. And I think after a year of consolidating and engaging with the club high performance component, you watch Busy Bees in 2020. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure that they're going to do well, Jerome. Busy Bees, uh, just talking about Busy Bees, quite a few of those boys have been as in the mix in your preseason. It's part of the uh, yeah we had them we had them last year for four or five weeks uh before they they stop um we worked till december yeah. with them and i must say they're really good and um you can see you know, the conditioning is good in, in newton um he just took it a bit further they started early this year so they're very they positive and they 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 work hard in what they want to do and, and i mean they've got Alfred also there, so the guys are doing a lot behind the scenes for the, the players and they've got a good thing going there. Right, uh, let's catch up with um, Brackenfell's um, uh, coach and uh, captain, Tinus van is of course coaching at Brackenfell at the moment and Luena from back is a uh, captain that side. I think the uh, first game is, is, is my altijd a big key. Uh, I can't be scrappy and such a good test. But uh, uh, was it the review case for McCar to come as a, as a group? So I was uh, by a positive thing, but my by a thing, by a fault, so by a thing I want to work. But yeah, need to man let them try to be as in the game tight and such a good test. So yeah, a busy piece for me. It's actually my for boss. You know, I think first half the it was a camp is a better platform for myself to skip. I think I'll let by a good depth to the half the. Give us skill like more hard press or harder press of defense. Better line speed. Was a bit of disruption in racks. Good stand in the scrum. Things that the first half a bit more difficult. So that can I feel a plan to give. I think it's rare for a little bit good angepassed. Now that first half and 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 the things for a bit more difficult. So I think it's going to be rare for a few men in the Super League to be able to do it. The next three is hard to win. We have it for Hamilton, for Derbel, SK and Falspy. So, yes, we have every year these friendlies. You know, you have to be able to play with the beginning. And every time you play, you don't have to play with yourself. You have to be able to get a good flag. So, yes, we work from week to week. And then we'll see how it's going to go in the league. It's very nice to be able to get back to the field. We have to be able to get back to the preseason. It was nice to be able to come to the field and to the field to sit and to open it and to actually execute it. Yes, the score is a bit verleidend and so on. I think we did very good and we made a lot of fouls, but in any way, in the second half, we had to come back to the field and to the field. We had to get a step up and so on, so we had to fill it. And we had more fouls, we had to bring more things. But yes, I think we had to get out of the game, which is good. So it's good. We look at the rugby as a physical sport and I think they had to bring it to the second half and they had to they have to take a step up and they have to talk about the coach with a hard talk and say about the front up or defense, disrupt on the ground with the ball, and the scrums are better going on. So yeah, I think they have done very well. And yeah, we have made a little more fouls, but we still have to manage to get on the board, which is also important. So overall, I think it's not a bad thing in the last game. I think we have very well learned by Jerome and his span. They have a very good coaching team there also. En dat geeft voor actually voor die spelers de nieuwe tools en dat doen baie goed met die ouders. En als je ouders brengt terug naar die club toe en ik ben busy bezig, ook zelf een paar ouders wat daar samen met ons oefen. 
En ja, dat is goed. Je kan zien, als je een spel dat, dat wijst. Maar ze elke jaar ons, ons wil competen en dat is altijd als makkelijk weer om in de top 6 te komen. En dan van daaraf, als je dan in de play-offs en zo, en zo ja, ons wil hard werken en ons oefenen hard daarvoor. Zo, so, ik ben, als we nou toen deze beest spelen, dat is super bij. Maar het was lekker dat het geweest voor ons. En dan is het drie harde vrienden wat komt, die andere super oude clubs. En dan kan ons werken voor onszelf meer. En waar ons moet gaan en waar ons moet werken. En dan kijk wat, wat is we doen. Alright, welcome back everybody. Tinas van Rensburg, of course, coach at Brackenfell and Llewellyn van Black. It's early days there. The one thing that I can say is that Brackenfell grass is looking pretty good. Uh, two weeks ago it was looking a little bit patchy, but now it's 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 looking good. Let's quickly take a look at the, the teams in uh, Super League A, just to give you an idea who uh, Brackenfell is going to be up against. So it's Primrose and Hamiltons, Brackenfell and Paul, Vix, Tigerberg, False Bay, SK Warmers, UWC, Villagers, Union Mill, Stellenbosch, Durbel, NTK and UCT. Yes, if we look at that uh, a load of teams there, there are no specific sequence. Um, you. It's a tough league. It's a tough league. It's you got some new guys there as well, Paul, for example. Yeah, and uh, Paul's been uh, doing some some big recruiting uh, this year, and um, it seems like you know that how huh? social media is no, our right. uh, yeah, it's our go-to uh, reference. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think they're going to do well. You guys have taken you guys have taken rugby to a whole new level. You know, yeah, you yeah, all yeah. know what everybody else. You've got to be now. ahead of the game, and you got to yeah. know what your opponents are doing. Do you so. and Jono sit and share notes <laughs> when you have CrossFit while the guys are doing their CrossFit? Do you sit and Nah, but yeah. Super League guys, it's always been a tough league. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have your your stock standards, your Martys, your Falsbergs, your Hammies, your Durbels. Those guys are always going to be in the top top off of the of the league. Yeah. And then it's a scrape for that. Um, so how's Milton looking at the moment? Same team. Nah, uh, we're not Captain great. Captain announced yet. Nah. Coach announced. We're we announced looking. Your coach? We're looking shocking this year. Uh, yeah. Jerome, let's talk to you about Milton. Um, are we going to again expect uh, a big stuff from Milton? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, Ismail will never tell the truth, but they, they're a quality side. They, <laughs> they have good players and they do their own recruiting. So, yeah, um, yeah they, they're they going to be a force again. Okay, have you announced the captain yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, but that will be handled soon. We're right. waiting on the guy coming from the Gauteng Alliance. All right, then. Of course, big sponsors at Milton this year, folks. We'll wait for the official Malcolm announcements Mark. and, 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 and <laughs> so on. Yeah. Right, so you can expect a whole lot of action. It's going to be great. Um, right, folks, remember, score energy drinks, of course, on board with Cape Rugby TV. If you want to win yourself a case of score, then all you need to do is SMS the word score to 33090. 33090, and you'll put yourself in the mix to win a case of score. Congratulations to last week's winner, Denver Goliath. Denver walks away with a case of score. Denver, someone from Cape Rugby TV is going to be in touch with you uh, shortly. Folks, we're going to take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we'll take a look at some of the friendlies that have been happening over the weekend. A lot of friendlies, a lot of fun. Back in a sec. Right, welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. Oh, fantastic uh, just talking around what's happening in the world of Western Brothers Rugby. But when we talk about Western Brothers Rugby, we're talking about club rugby. And at the moment, it looks like um, it's almost, Danny, it's almost like a, a switch has been turned mm. on at Western Province because we didn't see this um, so much uh, three, four weeks ago. But all of a sudden, it's just friendlies galore. No, definitely, JP. We're happy because it means uh, we're in business. And yeah. the, 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 the busy season has started. I'm very proud of our clubs um, with their pre-season uh, friendlies and that because it does add to a flavor to our fixtures yeah. and all those things. So uh, it's great to see. It's great to see the interaction between Poland clubs and Western mm -hmm. Province clubs. It's good for rugby. Because two weeks ago we had about maybe seven or eight friendlies. All of a sudden now we're looking at 25, 30 friendlies. No, definitely. Definitely. Uh, everybody's focusing on April to September, club rugby in Western Province. Yeah, it's yeah, I think there's a bit of stability uh, and when it comes from Western Province, you know that the fixtures are out and, um, mm. you know, it's set in stone. Clubs can sort of arrange uh, and sort of start planning and, and putting things into place. And it's also great to see the, the cross-pollination between different leagues, uh, guys seeing different, playing against different opposition. Do you think that there's anything that the guys took out of this, considering that last year for six months they couldn't play friendlies, they had to travel far away and that maybe coaches and players are saying like let's play friendlies again it we, we kind of understood what it meant to not have friendlies last year i think we saw the effects of it with no rugby uh, yeah. for a couple of months and the effects of, of no sport in general in a community that needs sport due to social yeah. Um, yeah. issues yeah. is massive and i think i, I think our club rugby has started now uh, yeah. it's officially started with the league is starting in three weeks four weeks time 
a, a club season has started. What does it do for the community, for the neighbours? Massive, and I mean absolutely massive. People look forward to your Saturdays uh, supporting the community clubs. Um, and it, it really, really inspires and motivates those guys that are putting on that first team jersey, whether whatever club they're representing, yeah. they're representing that community. And, and, and I mean, we had this conversation you know, about three weeks ago, uh, looking at the Collegians pitch, and the uh, guys had to go play on, uh, at Mandalay on the mm. cricket field for, for, for the interview. And we were just talking about the fact that um, getting a clubhouse and a field like that um, active, uh, getting water and sorting out the security and maybe the facilities is the knock-on effects of just having a, a local facility that's working is much bigger than just Saturday rugby. Well, even though under those circumstances, Collision still puts out the team against Tigerberg, still yeah. putting out teams against Fallsburg, I mean, Gold Cup champions two, uh, two years ago. And I mean, I take my hat off for, for a club. I, I'm, I'm quite close to a lot of the Collegians guys. And it's great to see that even under those circumstances, these guys are still coming to training. They're still putting in the hard yards. And it's, it's heartwarming to see that Club rugby has a massive effect in our community and it's a positive effect. No, well, I think that's uh, spot on. I think in sport in general, of course, very positive. Um, and as Danny said earlier on, also contributes to that social cohesion factor. What exactly is social cohesion, Danny? My, my neatest form, JP, is people, um, um, communities living together, sharing values, yeah. um, you know, and looking at uh, overall for looking out for each other you know that, that kind of thing yeah, and this is a national mandate it's a national yeah. mandate and team south africa you know yeah, everything yeah, working yeah. towards team south africa yeah. and team south africa i remember there was a song from the rolling uh, uh said main ingredients you know the rolling stones no no main ingredients that's a band uh, it's a band songs. it's a it's, no it's a band but they sang about um Recipes. Happy, happy individuals, happy families, okay. happy communities. You know that kind of thing. Building so it up. So the band is called the main ingredient. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with cooking. It's got nothing to do with cooking, but everything to do with rugby. Everything to do with rugby. <laughs> and I think it's important that we answer this. You know, we use these big words. That's mm. why I asked what sounded maybe like a silly question. What is social cohesion? And sometimes we don't quite understand what these these phrases are. And I'm glad you've expressed it in that way. All right, folks, let's take a look at some of those friendlies now. Um, Helderberg played against um, Vix over the weekend. Uh, so a win there for Vix, 38-17. Again, can't read too much into the scores. Blue Stars against Van Estelle with a win for them. Um, hands and Hearts beat Vineyards, 24-5. Tigerberg with a 43-5 win, win over Collegians. Macassar traveled through to Bredasdorp, beating Bredasdorp, 35-28. Th Scottsdean with a big win over Rocklands, 89-0. I don't think you can read too much into that. Um, interesting result for St. George's beating Wraith, be 31-0, and SK Warmers uh, with a win over Caledon, 31-26. Before we go to the next, um, uh, the next uh, sheet there, Jerome, if we look here at uh, some of those interesting uh, matchups, Fun Blue Stars against Van der Stel, they were sort of head-to-head. -head. That's quite a big number there, 45-5. Maybe it's still early. Mm. Maybe they don't have all their guys mm. back yet, but uh, it's still early. So, you, as you say, you can't read a lot into yeah. that. There's just one one good thing about all these fixtures. If you, when last did you see uh, Caledon, uh, see Caledon playing SK Warmers, mm. uh, and, yeah. um, and last year when when we had this water restrictions, the, the guys all went to this Bolan club. Mm. So now yeah. it's almost like a return. They, this the guys payback. Are, these guys are coming back here. Yeah. Because uh, certain fields are looking good, so they back here playing here, so that's good to see that uh, mm. there's this between Boland and in, in, in West yeah, Province. Yeah, I think Danny, I mean, you could probably comment a little bit on that. I mean, the relationship between Province and Boland is uh, clearly strong. No, definitely, JP Boland are neighbor, uh, They are neighbours, um, and um, there's always been a good relationship between, from school level and club level, between Boland clubs and that, and also with the unions. Yeah. So um, for us, it's important to, to have this good relationship with Poland. And um, we are looking at um, a relationship between Poland, SVD and Western Province going forward, cementing that. And maybe out of that, we have uh, inter-provincial or inter, uh, yeah, inter, inter Western club Cape Cape club champions and oh. all those things. So we, 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 for us, it's important. And I'm glad that the clubs are taking the lead, you know, with regard to this, yeah. and not necessarily at the uh, union level. not sitting back and waiting correct. for you, the, the initiative. This is great, yeah. yeah. No, that's fantastic. Let's take a look at some of the other friendlies uh, that was played over the weekend. Solorians uh, went down to Morningstar, 29 points to 10. Franz Hook, 50-22 uh, over Delicious. Brackenfell beating uh, Busy Bees, as you oh. saw, on Hamlets. 65-0 over Atlantis, and Belleville beating Mumray. All Saints with a win over Dolphins. Belhar beating Stelcor 80-0 and Kelsrava 39-19 over uh, Yester Refere. Uh, Danny? 
No, I was just saying, <laughs> Kyle's a river, I mean, Bernard took a soft trip in there with, um, <laughs> with Stel Cork Nations, but uh, it's good. So, big score. Well, I think, yes, I mean, um, Bell Har will draw, regard, uh, forget, let's, as we said, we can't really look at numbers here, mm. but Bell Har would have got some running rugby experience here, and that, well, they'll draw confidence from that, coming down from Super League A, um, and will, they will be looking to build now and go positively into Super League B. Yeah, I think uh, they've had the experience of playing in Super League for a number of years, so I think they'd want to get up there very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and they've got a lot of experience, guys, and it's, a, it's an established club, so I think they would want to hit that ground running quite hard. I think just the nice thing about the, the club rugby result is that the interest will, will spike now, and yeah. we'll want to find out mm-hmm. what the spiel is it, Jelle, um, what was Jelle game plan in uh, Hamlet, or, you know, and, and that I think is, is important, yeah. um, especially yeah. now the next couple of weeks. I think it's fantastic, right, folks? Just a reminder, them to, to, just to latch on to what Ish was saying there, is that the awareness spikes. But so just a reminder, we've seen the likes of Bell Har posting their posters and on, on which games are coming up and when their uh, teams are leaving. Remember to tag Cape Rugby TV so we can share it and tell everybody else what it is, what where it is that you're going and what it is that you're up to. So when you post on social media, we are able to grab those posters, put it on the TV show. We're able to put it on social media. Danny, just talking about this um, after the break, we're going to have a chat. But talking about this, there's a, so we're not going to go to Danny right now. But there's a social media uh, sponsorship media workshop coming up at Western Province Rugby on the um, 18th of March. So Danny, we're going to touch on that after break. We'll go to break. We're back in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. Cape Rugby TV. Remember, MCAM 24-hour pharmacies on the corner of N1 and Durban Road. Uh, got everything that you need. All your pharmaceutical products, your sports nutrition supplements, your orthopedic products. They've got free parking. Fantastic um, uh, salon upstairs and a restaurant. Really great place to go to. Great service at MCAM 24-hour pharmacy. They're also looking after Western Province Rugby at the moment, especially around the HBC, which is very close. But I love the fact that MCAM has got, I think the parking factor for me is the most convenient side of things. A lot of friendlies coming up. We're going to take a look at that in a second. Danny, uh, on the 18th of March, we've got a media and sponsorship workshop. Uh, We used to do this in the past. It's been two years since the last one. uh, 2019 at least we're going to see a few more of these courses um, specifically around clubs and how you get sponsorship and how you make activities work at your club how important is this for for clubs JP as you know um, club rugby is an important component in any community and to be a good club and to be active you need to be well funded so this is part of of, um, Cape Rugby TV as well as Western Province way of of educating um, the the clubs, um, the media people. We know most clubs are on the have their own media component to focus on how they can grow the base and income base of a club. Mm. So that for me is important, it, uh, and we want all clubs to be there at the workshop on the on the 18th. Um, and um, I'm sure that we'll take them to another level, and it's an important component with regard to getting the club name out in the public domain and obviously using the various skills and and, and, uh, and apps that's there, you know, yeah. to, to measure the club. Yeah, folks, so we will be looking a little bit of how do you use social media, how do you use Facebook, how do you use Twitter, how do you use Instagram. We'll take a look a little bit about how do you create a supporters club structure within your club <coughs> and then use that supporters club structure to, to, to amplify your activity and hopefully gain sponsorship so make sure that if you're from a club that you are there on the 18th of march at the sports science institute in newlands you can apply through western province and we'll of course post and share that on cape rugby tv as well so it's a course that must not be missed every club should have at least two delegates there all right let's take a look at the friendly fixtures coming up over the weekend as we said that it's almost like we're opening a tap and it's just club rugby galore right now brack and fall up against hamilton's this weekend this is going to be an interesting friendly false play take on collegians hamlets and dar are traveling to darling Helderberg and Villagers, Peniel Villagers and All Saints, Vintmill United and Young Blues, Elsie's and Belleville, uh, that game we just have to confirm, Esther Refier and Young Wesley's, Blue Stars and Allendale, Gardens and Strand Pioneers, Progress and Titans, <coughs> Goodwood and Hummadiers, Retreat and Temperance Cities. Okay, so before we <laughs> go to the rest, Jerome, are there any friendlies that jump out there for you? Yeah, the, the, the one is uh, Brackenfeld and in, uh, in Hamilton. Yeah. Look like a... Look like a tough one. Also, false by collegians. Yeah. It's uh, like neighbors. So <laughs> that's uh, that's 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 too. And then um, yeah, all the all the other friendlies. It's uh, it's uh, like you see, there's some 
Super A against uh, lower teams and Super B. So it's good, good matchup. Um, yeah, I think the few that jump out for me there is if, if the LC Rafir and uh, Belleville game kicks uh, is confirmed, I think that's going to be a fantastic game. Look out for Peniel Villages against All Saints, also going to be an interesting challenge, and uh, and then um, Blue Stars against Allendale. I think there's another another matchup, uh, Danny, that that could be uh, a good test, the water tester. No, that's a good game. There's no doubt about no. it. The one that stands out for me is the Kings of the West, because Hamlets against Darling. So, um, and you know, I have a soft spot for Hamlets because they travel with their supporters. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure they would like to have bragging rights from Mamre right through to, to um, Saldana. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, well, luckily they don't have to travel too far. No, uh, no, definitely. Darling's just around the corner. They just can pop in there at Peter Dirk Ace's spot and go and... Evita Peron's Combeza or something like that. All right, I'm sure that they will have... They probably won't have Danny's main ingredient there, but uh, nevertheless, let's take a look at the rest of the fixtures. <laughs> Morningstar up against Whistling Wheels. This is another great fixture. Macassar Primrose. There's a good fixture. Mm -hmm. Peninsula Silvertree, Calgiver and Durbel. Young Peoples True. and Albions. Crawford and Busy B. Strands and Georgia. Scottsdale and Stelcor. Hands and Hearts are traveling to Robertson. Manenberg Rangers up against Rangers. <coughs> Strand United against SK Women's and Tigerberg in UWC. Jerome, that would have to be a, a pick. Tigerberg and Udubs. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Udubs uh, are playing basically with the with the second second team, but it's also good for them to get their guys going before the league starts. But, but now let's just pause you there for a second. Will that not be their main team when the league starts? Because we're not necessarily going to see the Vastika well, players in the same no. squad. No, they 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 play, but uh, they normally join in later. So a lot of okay. these guys who's going to play will will. By the start the season. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyone else yeah. that jumps up for you, Ish? I think Strands and Georges. Um, I think it's a big Strand derby. Uh, it would be nice to to get Cape Rugby down there to that game. Um, should I just throw that in there? Mm, and for me also, there <laughs> the two Rangers, Manenberg Rangers and Surrey State Rangers, mm. would be an interesting one. They neighbours. Yeah. Uh, I want to see who's the king of or who's the king Ranger out there. Uh, Ish, you've, you've put me in a spot there, but I would say that is a derby match in Georgia Strand. And I, I tell you, there are so many they interesting are. games here that it, it's, it's going to be very, very hard to choose. We will look to see which of the clubs are, are making the, uh, the right noises. The right noises, yeah. And uh, those are, of course, the ones that get that tag us and tell us what's going on and, and make sure that they are, are... We've always done that. We've always mm. sort of said that's the policy. The club that makes the most noise is the club that's making the most effort. That's where we try and go to. So we will, we'll, we'll build on that in that media and sponsorship workshop. We're going to take an ad break when we come back from the break. We'll catch up uh, with Langa's pre-season training and, of course, the Stormers behind the scenes. And this week, we speak to Jean-Luc Duplessis. Welcome back, everybody. Cape Rugby TV here every Wednesday from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Let's catch up now with Langa's pre-season training. Of course, Langa's playing this year in Super League C, and they've got some new coaching staff. Mm. Head coach is John Gidokwe, favorite Langa. Of course, uh, also works at Western Province Rugby, and uh, followed by assistant coach Nick Leonard. They played uh, this. Uh, they are playing, in fact, um, tomorrow at um, UCT. But uh, let's see a little bit behind the scenes now.
Manga playing in Super League C this uh, season. Folks, we're running very tight on time. Let's go through, straight to the coaching staff. John Ginokwe, of course, former... Danny? Springbok. Spring, Springbok, but he's had a quite illustrious career. Not many people score four tries yeah. in a test. I always, uh, so John Gi is, is a great player. He's comes from the area and uh, he's giving back now. You and know, he's been playing as well. He uh, still plays every now and then. He plays now and then with Jerome them in the... In the I think they call them SA legends and that, but that's more of a holiday, you know, than playing rugby. <laughs> right, folks, let's catch up now with their assistant coach at um, Langa and they're part of their preseason, uh, Nick Leonard. Finding, I'm finding my feet and uh, getting to know the guys, but we, we look good. So we got a, we got a, we got quite a special game coming up. It's uh, we're playing UCT in a we're kind of building a partnership with them. So we got a friendly on Thursday against them on the Green Mile. Um, the guys are amped for it, but we, we're trying to prepare for that, but also looking towards our, our season as well. You know what, in the end of the day, in the, when we started in the, about two months ago, uh, a little nervous, I'll be honest, but uh, when, we go, when we got going, you know what, rugby speaks one language, and learned a couple of Kosa words on the way, um, but you know, we, 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 they've, they've welcomed me. It's one big brotherhood, nothing matters except the rugby and the season coming here. Try to prepare well for the, the season. Um, We'd like to make playoffs. That's uh, that's the goal, and we'll see what happens. Playoffs is anybody's game, um, but we, we want to prepare well. We want to do better than last season. Um, so what's most important? Yeah, we, that's what we want to do. And the big, the big goal is to try to get promoted. I, I guess if you want to if you want to go up, you have to, and you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. Um, and the guys know that. They know that they've got to prepare well. Um, so yeah, if you want to be the best, we got to beat the best. And if we do get promoted with those guys that have come down. It's even more special. Um, it's going quite well. Yeah? Uh, we've been doing a lot of things, so um, fo mostly we're focusing on defense because we can play. Everyone can play, but now nah, what, what, what we are hoping for is to improve our defense. Because last year we didn't go up; we could have gone up because we played some great rugby. So I think this year it's more about like defense and also attack. As, as well. Both our coaches are, are quite new because um, Jongi was assistant coach um, last year. So this year we have him as head coach and also um, Nick as assistant coach. But um, they both are both doing well, working well together. Yeah, we, we're getting there. We, we're getting there. It's quite nice. It's a nice vibe. Everyone's looking forward to coming to practice when they're here. But sometimes one of them is not here, so, but it's still, it's still a great um, session anyway. Yeah. We, we've been here for quite a long time now. I think we one of the oldest teams in the league. So I think it's about time that we go up. We, we're not leaving any stones unturned this year, so we want to go up. The, the, the focus is just going up. We don't care who we meet or who we play, we just want to go up, we want to win. Always fantastic uh, catching up behind the scenes there. We're sure Langa's going to have a fantastic season in uh, Super League C. Head coach there, John Ginokwe, assistant coach Nick Leonard. And we wish you guys the very best of luck. Of course, uh, Langa's playing at the Green Mile at UCT tomorrow night. So why don't you go around there and, and catch up with them. One of the star players of the DHL Stormers, of course, in the, the match against the Sharks. As you know, Stormers walked away with a victory over the weekend over the Sharks. Was DHL fly-off Jean-Luc Duplessis. He has got a magic hands and a magic boot. We managed to catch up with him behind the scenes at the High Performance Center in Belleville. Yes, now obviously it's great to be back on the field, you know. Uh, it's been quite a while, it's been a long wait for me. Um, you know, but it's good to be back, you know, it took a lot of patience, a lot of hard work, you know, um, with the physio staff as well, and the medical staff. Uh, but it's good to be back, very rewarding uh, to be back in the, on the park with the boys. Um, it, was, it was obviously a tough game, a tough encounter. Um, you know, conditions didn't make it that easy, the ball was quite slippery. Um, both teams tried to look to play, you know, in the opposition's half, you know, and try and limit errors. You know, I think in the first half we did that quite well and we got rewarded for that and I think in the second half we struggled at times um, but I think it was great character shown by the boys to bring it through to the end. I think it's, uh, it's been something that's been bothering us for a while, something that's been carried along with us for a while. Um, Storm has been struggling away from home the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, well, I think we just we just decided this is a great time you know, to sort of change that um, you know, and get a win uh, on the road for us. I think it, it, builds, it builds great confidence for us and hopefully some momentum as well. We know, we know full and well what they're capable of. I mean, if you just look at the calibre of their players, you know, they're sitting with basically a full international side. Um, you know, so, so we know, we know full, fully of, uh, of the chance that lies ahead of us. And uh, we, will, we, we know we will have to come out and really give it 
all, everything. I think it's, 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 it's quite well known that we probably have the best supporter space um, in, in Super Rugby, you know, and, uh, and we really appreciate it. You know, every, everybody who comes out supports us, you know, it's massive appreciation from our side. It really does help us and drive us forward you know, when we need it. Um, so it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic feeling running out and playing in front of the faithful of Newlands. Hi, I'm Jean Duplessis and you're watching Cape Rugby TV. Right, folks, we're running a little bit tight on time. Uh, great catching up there with Jean-Luc. Um, Jerome, of course, the Stormers will be happy with that win, beating the Sharks. I'm happy with it. Oh, way win is good. Yeah. So, not this week, the next week is just another game at Newlands for them. They must take the points before they go overseas. Then they're on track. Yeah. Danny, you said to me last week you could not guarantee it. Um, you must have made the right phone call because you, I, I mentioned to you how, how upset I was about Bismarck the, the seas jumping up and down after that Curry Cup win. So I'm very happy. JP, I'm elated and um, I'm still wondering about that beautiful clean out of Eo Eo and that you were oh, penalized for that. It was a thing of beauty. An absolute magnificent clean out. It reminded me of when he put Bismarck on his behind. You <laughs> 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 so well. Uh, uh, it was a great game, and uh, Eben uh, certain, certainly uh, uh, brings a whole new spark to the to the to the word clean out. Um, right, folks, we're going to leave it at that, Jerome. Uh, your plans for the weekend? Lots of games, JP. I mm. must still still decide uh, <laughs> which one to go to. <laughs> uh, Ishmael? Yeah, no. Uh, all the best, all the teams that are playing. Full round of fixtures, so I'm going to definitely be popping around one of those games. Yeah, you weekend. guys don't have any friendlies no. or anything this weekend. Next weekend. Bit of a relax. Who's your next friendly up again? Uh, Villagers. Villagers. All right. And Danny, yourself? JP, you'll see lots me. Lots of rugby. Lots of rugby. So I'll be popping in at yeah. a number of games. Fantastic. Right, folks, that's a wrap from us here at Cab Rugby TV. Don't forget, of course, um, Dulux Maitland is number 30. Kubrick Road, just over Ford Tecker Road. They've got all of your paint spec supplies. Everything that you need certainly is the paint supplier that you have to visit. And then just a reminder, on the 18th of March at the Sports Science Institute at Newlands is, of course, that media sponsorship workshop all for clubs and club development and how to go and find sponsors and make media and uh, work at your club. That's a wrap from us. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye. This Cape Rugby TV feature is brought to you by Score Energy Drinks, MKM 24-Hour Pharmacy and Deluxe Maitland.